Last week, I made a video about what's the best first car to buy. And this week, I wanted to dive deeper and talk about what's the best first track car to buy. So I've come here to Audubon Country Club at Gridlife to talk with some people about what cars they feel like are the best for going to the track. I'm gonna list out my four top picks for the best first track car. Starting with number four, the BMW E36 or E46. Great first car for the track, uh, E36 or E46. I like the E36 because it's just a little bit smaller, a little bit more raw, um, but really balanced. Uh, the balance is huge. If you can get in a car and turn consistent lap times, there's, there's something working really well, and you can do that in an E36 or an E46. So the E46s have an S54 engine, and the E36s had an S50 or an S52, and they made roughly 100 horsepower less than the S54. So the S54 is, it's a, it's a race engine. It can rev really high. I wouldn't say it's bulletproof, but man, you can just turn lap after lap. It's a great engine. I love the S54, especially the S54 and an E36 chassis, which is lighter, it makes for an awesome combo. The E36s are starting to get a little cheaper. You, know, you can probably buy a decent one for 5,000. Now, if you're looking for a clean M3, they're actually, the prices are kind of going up a little bit. You might end up having to spend eight, nine, 10, maybe even up to 12 if it's really nice. But parts wise, maintenance, they're, it's not gonna nickel and dime you. Even though it's a BMW, this, this age, yeah, I think most of the maintenance things you could pick up at Advanced Auto. Yeah, I had to replace the alternator, it was old and junk. Um, new starter, I had to put a starter on. I mean, you can get a lot of that stuff at Advanced. The BMW is a great option for a good first track car. It's reliable and consistent. Wear items are also fairly cheap, but certainly not the cheapest. Most people will think about the initial price of their first track car, but that's not as important as the ongoing cost of wear items. Even if you buy a car for cheap, that doesn't mean that the tires and brake pads will be cheap. You want a car that won't be hard on wear items, which means you want a lightweight car. possible to get anything lighter than, uh, you know, modern than a tiny front wheel drive car. Even Miatas and stuff, you just, they're not as light, so. I think it's a great first track car. Uh, it's, it's cheap, it's light, it's super easy on consumables, like, uh, you, and brake options are, they're everywhere. You can use OEM stuff and get real big uh, suspension. There's a million variants of it. Um, depending on setup, I mean, it can be tail happy, it can be neutral, you can make them push, you can do whatever you want with them. They're super flexible, double wishbone, back and front. Uh, real easy on consumables though, and I love the feel of a lightweight car. That's the main reason I stuck with it for 22 years. So. I think it's just a really great all around, like low budget platform. I've never had much of a budget to spend on cars. Uh, and then I got real busy, and I think it's an easy platform to live with. Uh, you can go real fast with them. Some of the fastest cars in Gridlife Time Attack are uh, old Hondas. Uh, and some of the fastest cars in Gridlife Touring Cup are old Hondas. Uh, but you can also daily drive them and get 40 miles per gallon. And engine swaps are like Legos. Uh, it's plug and play. And uh, the scene with Hondas might not always be the most uh, adult. But the scene with the old ones is getting kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I love driving. I think it's a great car to drive. Uh, you can go pretty quick for a, a little tiny bit of money, which is, my, that's, that's the reason I drive. So you want a car that's reliable to turn consistent laps with, and you want a car that's lightweight and easy on consumables. Which brings us to our number two option, the almighty Honda S2000. I think an S2000 makes a wonderful track car and it will develop you as a driver. Um, it's a very balanced car, so you have to learn to drive at the limit and, and to hold the car at the limit and control the way it's yawing and, and moving around on you. It's very cheap to operate when it's stuck, um, doesn't eat tires very quickly, doesn't go through brakes very often, 
Um, it's not super powerful, so it's hard to get into a lot of trouble. If you want to um, develop yourself as a driver, you need a two wheel drive car, in my opinion, because you have to learn to manage that car better. If you go with a rear wheel drive car, you're going to be balancing that car all the way through the corner um, and managing your throttle on the exit to not spin the car. Front wheel drive car, you're still gonna have to manage the throttle on exit, but it's not so much to, to spin the car out, it's more to gain all of the time that, that you can get. Seat time is 100% the most important thing. Seat time is the only modification you can make that will transfer from car to car, from track to track. Um, everything else you put on the car will eventually wear out and you will lose that investment. Every dollar you invest in seat time, you keep forever, you keep for your entire life and, and your, all of your experience. To develop yourself as a driver and become a good track driver, um, it does you no good to have the best track car in the world sitting in the garage. You want that car on track. So the, the best track car is one you can afford to take to 10 events a year and, and it, not gonna be working on it uh, in the paddock for 10 events a year. It's, you wanna be able to go out, make every session, um, stay out there the whole 20 minutes or 15 or 30 minutes, whatever that session is, um, and take it home and, and focus on driving, not on fixing it, not on keeping the car running, and not about worrying how you're going to afford the next event. The difference in cost of the set of tires between an Evo and that Civic is an event entry. Um, probably multiple event entries. So every time you've got to replace those tires, that's two events you can't do, or that's eating your budget for two events. The platform of the NA and B Miata, there are so many everywhere. Every track weekend that you go to, you see a bunch of them. You pair that with the extensive long-term knowledge. These cars are old by now. Our, this is a 2001, it's 20 years old. The Miata is a rear wheel drive platform, fairly short wheelbase, which means it likes to change direction well, and they're fairly light, so it's lower on consumables. It doesn't eat brakes and tires nearly as much as your Camaros will. So that's another kind of cost-saving measure. Parts for the Miata are very easy to find and the community is huge. Part of it, just from a practical point of view, is uh, cheap parts and it's reliable. We drive this car to the track. We're one of the idiots who, we actually tow a trailer with our race car to events because we just can't afford a truck and a trailer as much as we'd like one. I would pick something that you have. I mean, I'd start there. With the One Lap of America, we've seen minivans race. We've seen Durango's race. Um, we've seen Fitz race. Nobody has more fun around here than Honda Fitz. You just need a car, okay tires. You need good brakes, good safety, and get an instructor. If you've got a good community behind you of people who have done it, can help you throw knowledge at you, and something that you can get parts easily. That, that kind of equation seems to, for me, make a lot of sense when you're really getting into tracking for the first time. Don't wait until you feel like you have the perfect car to go out. The perfect car is one where you've got a helmet and you've got good safety under you, and one that has good brakes with good fluid and go find an instructor and just do it. There's never gonna be a good time to go tracking um, other than next weekend. So here, fun facts, Turbo PT Cruiser was my first car. 300 horsepower, so much fun, <laughs> so much fun. Is that a good first track car? No, <laughs> no.